Welcome to the uh, new edition of uh, Change for and Storytelling for Social Change and Healing. This is part one. And with me, I have Nick Dahlstrom. Nick D. Dahlstrom, who is actually... Uh, it's actually you that uh, is the content for this today. So I'm uh, more uh, like a listener to you. And I can ask questions. Okay, thank you. And... Uh, any of you listeners out there, thank you for joining us. This is Ship of a New Story. We're sending live from House of Stories. So we're part of Almendal and Visby. We're currently in our Stockholm studio, based locally in Sigtuna. So, with <clears throat> warm, warm welcome. And <clears throat> yes, we are in Almedalen, uh, which is like a local event, but that means also we live in a global world. Uh, so we need to focus locally, think globally, and hence act locally. And today's theme is a little bit is on the story. What is today's story? What is the stories that we have uh, today? old ones? Do we need new ones in order to head for a new future which is more inclusive, which is focusing on best for the world, not best in the world, and, and the role of stories? And I want to share some experience on that with you today. <clears throat> so, um, but I have also Bo here on my side here, Bo Yis. Uh, he's also an experienced uh, videographer, filmmaker, working a lot with stories. We have been collaborating for many years also upon Healing Story. What then Healing Story is? <clears throat> so Bo, just a quick, I know you're the listener here, but what is a Healing Story for you? Just as a, a working with film and photography. Well, I think... Uh, Many, many stories, stories are actually, are actually healing, healing uh, in many ways, uh, 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 because uh, uh, you can go, you can go back, back to the Bible, Bible for, for example. example. If you, you take, take a parable, parable it's much easier easy to uh, uh, adapt uh, and, and accept, accept the story. The story uh, uh, if, if it's, it's a story, story not uh, somebody, somebody telling you, you do better. <laughs> if you uh, hear a story of someone else who struggled with the same problem that you do, you can, um, you can um, actually, actually distance, distance you, you from your own uh, 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 personal person view, you, and you and can you actually can learn, learn to your story to how dealt with the same, same stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. In many of our stories, old time stories, and I want to go just touch upon a little uh, the role of the storyteller because the uh, the storyteller, the oral storyteller, goes where it's one of the oldest functions within society. And, and the storyteller has always been the carrier of the culture in which we live. Uh, many of my friends who are working internationally with storytelling and connecting, trying to find the roots uh, in culture which still have a living uh, oral storytelling tradition. There's not so many of them. But in some of those places, in particular, I remember a friend who went down to Australia and went out to some of these uh, remote places. Uh, and, and in some cases, they felt they lost their culture because their last storyteller was died or had died. Now, the storyteller is not like the, the, uh, the lone owner of a story. In those, uh, uh, in, in those settings, as today, a storyteller is also sharing our common story. It's just the uh, navigator uh, taking you on board uh, and including all the listeners uh, within the story and hence shaping today's society, shaping an understanding of the society in which we live. And that today, of course, with multimedia and with so many corporate sections, we will have corporate storytelling, we will have performing art storytelling, the stories basically within everything. You can't do without a story when you... Well, I cannot do without stories, actually. I watch a lot of films. And uh, one on the one side, it's uh, relaxing. Uh, but uh, many times, uh, I get a little fed up with all the action stories. And sometimes when you have a story that really touches you uh, deep inside, you, the story continues after the story is done, actually. Uh, and uh, with other stories, you forget them as quickly as it, uh, the story is over. But if it's a really a healing story, 
it continues in your process because uh, the story is not yet done because you continue in the way you are thinking back on the, how would I deal dealt with the same thing in those situations and I'm, I must say I don't come across that often on that those kind of stories at least not uh, on Netflix but there are I guess <coughs> there are some I, I know there are <laughs> there are some other networks uh, that works with healing story uh, in, in particular, where maybe more like the oral tradition, but of course that expands out to other media, uh, like the Healing Story Alliance, or here in the Nordic we have something called Alba Alliance, Alliance för Läkande Berättande. Uh, so, a uh, group of people who try to focus in gathering these stories, and sometimes they're old ones, sometimes they're new ones, that create an understanding and, and an inner deep experience. Mm. Uh, me personally, I work a lot with storytelling with children and youth and uh, I want to take this moment today maybe to share a little bit of some of these stories. Before I do that, I just want to show you uh, a little bit that I have some lovely people around me, uh, friends. Uh, here, for instance, is Inge Lisa Ulreich, uh, who's just come out or recently came out with this book, The New Story which is a pathway, storytelling as a pathway to peace. Have you read it? Uh, not all of it, but bits and pieces. It's all pretty right. hefty. There's a lot of material, a lot of work there, deep work, how to use story. Uh, but when you talk about within, one can also uh, work with story for healing physically within, not only like mentally, but physically. So here is Nancy Mellon on body eloquence working also to seeing how closely the narrative could connect even uh, talking to our physical being. Mm -hmm. For those of you who sort of feel okay that that spirit and, and physical, it, uh, there's a connection within there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, of course, you will have, I just brought three books here quickly from my bookshelf. This is a, a, a book from the uh, organization NGO Initiatives of Change called Beyond Walls. This is a collection of about, not almost, but almost 100 stories of personal sharings of changes uh, in, in life due to story or sharing that with story. What made them change, build a new story uh, and, and, and finding healing in their world. Uh, do you recommend them all three, or is one of your favorites? I do do rec They're very different in, in their components. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe... Which one should you start with? Well, I'd say today, because the theme is new story, the ship of the new story, mm. and how we create a new story uh, for the world in which we live, maybe I'd go for the new story, mm. uh, which is very much... It's the thickest. <laughs> it's the thickest, but there are a lot of little sections in it which you can, can read. Yeah. Now, though, also working with story, when I work with children and youth, uh, I also uh, I, I try to have this today triple climate focus. So uh, how do we work with the stories that we, we, we share, perform, however we decide to do that with each other? How do we touch the climate within ourselves as well as the climate between people, between you and me and others, and collectively between us and the planet upon which we live? So this is something I really try to focus in my storytelling. Can you get all those three, those three components into a story? And yeah, right. that's your, it must be a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you normally don't com uh, c combine the thinking about environment with storytelling. But of course, it must be, uh, you can have a, a lot of stories in that. Well, if we are going to change the world with that and, and actively actually change our behavior, it, it starts with well, what most people would say, like with a thought, which is then going into a narrative. You express something, you know, it becomes a story, and a story in which I need to believe if, if I'm going to change my behavior. So, so, so how do I do that? And, and what is the new story? And, and the more, and, and if I take this old role of the storyteller, bonding a culture uh, and that culture in those days was very local or regional today we have a global village 
I mean, really, because we have a, a, a global Earth. It might be big and round, but still what we do on one side is connecting to the other one, and, and we need all to connect. So how do we make everyone feel part of the same story? Because only when you feel you're part of the story, you will enact upon it. Yeah, I thought about your, uh, what you said just now, uh, if, you want, if you want to change. But what if you don't want to change? <laughs> uh, most people don't, I think. Uh, but I think actually it's because you are, as I told before, you are much too involved in your narrow view on your perspective. And, uh, and that's also, I think, where the stories can come in and uh, kind of give you an alternative view of things. But, but not, not necessary, necessary do you, you have, have to commit, commit to it, to it. <laughs> but you but can you listen, listen and, and hear others perspectives, others perspectives. and that's, and that's I, think, I think is easier, easier than feeling oh well, why should i change, I change? I'm, I'm good, good. I'm, I'm doing my best, best. You, see? you see but sometimes, but sometimes you, you actually, actually need to change, change even, even if you don't realize it yourself well, well, most, most stories use the, uh, the, the, the the triple, triple repetition, repetition. <laughs> uh, for, for a, a reason. reason. If we, we want to make a statement, want to understand something, it needs repetition. repetition. Well, sometimes, sometimes the penny drops on the first try, but you, you might, might need to listen and listen again and, listen and feel, feel, okay, if you have that triple uh, focus on, on the inner, the relational, and the responsibility for the global, mm -hmm. uh, then you can also say, okay, well, maybe I am doing, but maybe I can do something slightly differently in order for any of these three to, to expand or, or become more sustainable. <clears throat> Uh, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. and, and, and uh, for instance, I'm working a lot also with trying to, how can I, uh, how can I advocate for John, the next generation to stand up on the inside, to make them stand up on the inside, not only for themselves, but for the togetherness and for the global, you know, without feeling too stressed. Stand out, stand up on the inside. Yeah, so how do you stand up on the inside? interesting expression. What does it really mean? It means there's a little story here uh, about a child, mm -hmm. and the child was out walking with his dad to the shop. It was a, let's say today, it was a party shop. In this shop, there were different divisions. There was the little balloon section. Mm -hmm. Now, daddy was walking around, but the, the uh, child uh, found one of these helium balloons. You know, like with a weight, and it's kind of standing up. And uh, the child got very curious and just sort of tapped a little bit on the balloon. And it, it just bounced gently, gently back and back into position. Now that was fascinating. So I need to try to do that again. And so a second tap, second one is a little bit harder. So the balloon just bounced a little bit more back and up again. And now this time, whoa, this fun. So, so, so the kid went the kid for a went fist for and a, a full knock on, Sean, and, and the balloon, the balloon just bashed down into down the floor the and, and bashed, bashed it back, back up again. Up again. <laughs> and, 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 and just at just that, that point, point, the father, the father caught, caught sight of the little child, child standing there, there hitting a the balloon, balloon and up and down and, 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 and he curiously came up and said, hey, hey, Junior, what is it, do you think? That, that makes that, that balloon, balloon stand up, stand up again, again every, every time, time you hit it down. down. And the child, the child just looked up at that and said, Dad, Dad you think, you know, you know I, think I think it's because it's standing up, up on the inside. inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you need a little helium. helium. <laughs> we need a little helium not only to get pipey voices, but also to find that sort of strength to feel, okay, what I do matters. I do have the possibility of making change in my life, in our joint life, and take responsibility uh, for the wholeness. Because when I hear this expression, uh, for me, I associate to proud, to be proud of yourself. Even if you are not the best, not the most beautiful, not the youngest or richest, uh, you, can you can still, still be proud, proud of the things, things that you, you actually are. are. You, you, there, must there must be something, something that you are good at. at. There must there be must someone that loves you, perhaps. perhaps. So, so you should, you be, should happy be happy for, for the things, things you actually are, uh, can be can happy, happy for. for. And uh, so that is to stand up on the inside, to be proud. I don't know, that's my association. 
on that on expression. That expression. Well, that, yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, any of that will help you to stand up on the, the inside. I always try to, with all the people I work with, I always try to focus in and see what is, what is my unique potential. If we were to ask ourselves that, each and every one. <clears throat> and, and I'm sure we have several. And, and with that with unique, that, unique, that, that means, means, doesn't mean, mean that, that there's not other people, other people like me, because there are other people who have the same kind of uniqueness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but if I can identify that and start, and start to build a little bit, bit feel good and confidence within myself, myself and, and, and with a bit of steering, steering not, not sort of focus, focus and maybe that's, that's part of what I see now, if we talk about a new story, and that's also what we do a lot with within the ship for a new story, the refocus from how do I stand up to become the best in the world because we so much live or have lived in a competitive society, how can I develop myself and this unique potential uh, so I get an, uh, uh, an abundance and an overflow of that so I can share with society not, not to be, to be best, best in the world, world but to be, be best, best for the world, world. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that little switch, switch. Hmm. that uh, i mean so so, so working the way promise to be best for the world well, well jointly to be, to be best, best for the world, world so taking, taking away, away trying, trying to move away maybe a little bit from the potential greed that might creep in that do i how much do i want enough to cover my need or my greed and, and, and how, how do, do I then... Uh, uh, but if you are best for the world, are you better than others for the world? Are you their best, best for the world, or, or maybe you mean maybe something, something else? else. Uh, I don't, I don't think, think I have to be the best, because I think to be best for the world, it's just sort of an eye-opener to look at it differently to the the solo performance, but also the collective one. How do we we jointly uh, tackle the challenges uh, that we have in the world? And and there's another story I want to share with you today because when you sort of what is the focus? And, and for me, this is something I really like to share uh, on on how we find meaning in life. Uh, and 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 what then is that? I mean, that's a big question. What, what, what's the meaning of life? Uh, I work a lot with existential health, uh, which is also spiritual well-being, uh, which is also another way of standing up on the inside and understand society and my purpose within that. So, so with that, I actually wanted to share a little story. Uh, I don't know if we can... Can we share a video clip here today? Can we do that? Uh, is it on the computer? Yeah, yeah I think there should be... A, let's see here if we can... If we can find... Oops, that's going down here. So we play some. Oh, where is? Is it on uh, Chrome, perhaps? It was on Chrome. Somebody's uh, closed down Chrome here. Chrome. That's Chrome. No, uh, there it should go. be there somewhere. Okay. Is that there it is. So Can we have here, a picture? Yeah, it's good. good. Are we in there? We do? We do. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So I yeah, just want to play this short. It's a four-minute story uh, about, about meaning, meaning of life. Of life. away, but I kept the largest one. 
And I used to play with making reflections of the sun and finding dark spots and shooting light into the dark spots. And you know, I still keep that little piece of mirror and I have it here inside my, my inner pocket. And I always carry it with me to remind myself to always try to share some light into dark places. And to me, that is the meaning of life. The man thanked him and, and the whole crowd gratefully went out to have their coffee. Now, a few years later, Alexander received a letter and inside it was also a check. And the letter read, Hi, you probably won't remember me, but I'm the one who asked the question about the meaning of life and I'm a writer and I've just released a book and in this book, among many other things, I've also told the story and your reply about the meaning of life and I just want to thank you because that question was so important for me during a time when I had a really tough period in my life and uh, here's a check of $250,000 and I hope you can use that. And with this money, Alexander could complete the library of the academy that has so long been, been stalled and uh, awaited to be finished. And this story just reminds us all that perhaps more of us should strive and work to share light into the dark spots of life. Okay, so um, yeah, um, how do we share light into dark places within ourselves or within the society of which we live? Nothing. Sometimes, I mean, I like the dark. I'm working in theatre, uh, working with lights, so dark is not always bad. But symbolically here in this place, when the dark places uh, that do not feel well and function well within the context of my body or the society in which we, we live, uh, how do we bring light into that? And, and also the question is then, if I, keep, if I keep being the light, well, I might burn out. We have many people who've been burned out because they're passionate and entrepreneurs, whatever they, they burn for. So how do we find the refills? Where is that? In, and that's why this idea of, of being the mirror. Uh, I, I don't have to be the light, but if I can reflect the light and also see what is that light source for me, and that's going to be very different for each and every one of us. But just to see what is that? Uh, where's the well? Today's theme is a little bit on water. Where is the well upon where I, I get the water? Uh, to, to, to give me strength, to stand up on the inside, to carry on with the things I believe in for the greater good of everyone. Yeah. Uh, in this story, uh, it paid off. <laughs> and that's great. And sometimes, of course. It does. it does, but, uh, but not, not always. always. And then uh, uh, maybe uh, then you have to have, have your strength, strength from, from other, other places, places, even if even your direct, direct uh, good uh, deed doesn't, doesn't pay, pay off, off in uh, uh, payback things. things. Yeah. So, that, so that's, that's the dwell you are talking about, about of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. What is what the dwell? And uh, for me, actually, that's where it started. It's quite, quite fun, fun because, because today uh, you are, they, they are digging, digging a dwell on your, your, your house. Your house. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Very <laughs> deep dwell <laughs> that <laughs> is not planned, but, but this happened because the dwell ran, ran out. out. Right? But well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a little bit symptomatic that we've been talking the session before this one. You know, we were talking about circular economy and carrying responsibility for the world. How do we make sure, for instance, there's enough water in the world? And, and uh, here we just ran out of water. The world just dried up and we need to deal with it because without water, 
there's not a fun. Yeah, yeah and, and you, uh, since, we've since we've been here a couple of days with you, and, and we haven't had any water, water. you take water, water for granted all the, all the time, time, and suddenly and so you don't, don't have, have even for the toothbrush. toothbrush. And, especially and especially not going water into water the toilet and things. That's very vulnerable, and cooking and whatever. So this is a good story, just a real case story on on how the collective, how do we build on new stories because life and the earth is interconnected. Um, and, and we need to shape those stories together. Uh, I want to mention... And I just but let me add, yes, it's yes, good with... It's nice to have good neighbors when this happens. <laughs> yay, yay. So actually, as we speak here from the studio, we're sending live here uh, at Almedalen, we're sending live from House of Story in Stockholm, Sigtuna, and... Uh, uh, but we're part of the Ship of a New Story section here. So meanwhile, we're sitting here, just outside here, they're now digging up, redigging up a well to give us some water. So uh, it's uh, fascinating. Yeah. Life by water, on water, uh, as we're sailing the ship uh, towards a better world for all. Uh, one of the things I do, try to do because also sometimes, sometimes it's hard it's to hard memorize, memorize those things. What are the stories that we want to memorize and what are those that stick to us? You said sometimes you don't want to change and sometimes I said sometimes we need repetition, we need to retell the stories like triple times. Uh, one little section of stories here uh, that I've been working on is called Cat's Eyes Tales. Cat's Eyes Tales is a setup of 10 short stories, mainly for children and young, with uh, short stories that just Helps, helps you feel, feel a little, little bit, bit better. better. Ideally, makes, makes you stand, stand up on the inside, inside makes you find meaning in the life and connect and other stories, uh, personal stories that could join into any of these beads. So I got each. Is that a necklace or what? This is a little bracelet. So this is a bracelet you can carry on uh, 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 on your arm, and each of these little beads uh, is a story within itself. And to each one of these, you can charge them with personal stories that connect with the particular theme of that bead and see what does that mean. So you like, you like a USB stick? <laughs> you can charge them with a story and information. You can absolutely share these things with stories and also they will also help you. I mean, any bracelet could do that if you kind of fill that with some context so that, that I can meet up and share with you, for instance, like these, this green bead here, which is the kind of an environmental, peaceful climate one. Uh, what's my story with that? And, and if I do that, I'd like to hear your story. So then we start exchange stories. Connect. <coughs> Sorry. So this so bracelet, this bracelet is, is actually to, to memorize, memorize the stories. It's a help for memorizing. Memorizing, is it? Yeah, yeah. And, opening and opening up the process, the process, the process of sharing yeah. story with each other. Mm. So, so because hopefully you might be, or I mean, that would be a way of being curious. Hey, what are the beats on your hand? Well, these are my stories, part of my stories. I mean, we all have a... Because a, a, a I find it very, always, always when you are asked to tell the story. Oh, I forgot everyone, everyone suddenly. suddenly. And then and it should, should be a good thing if you have uh, some, some kind of uh, uh, triggering, triggering help. help. Okay, okay, I take I number, the, the blue pearl. pearl. I, I always, always remember, remember the blue pearl. pearl. And then and I, I tell, tell the story, story from that because... Actually, it's, it's the same, same thing when you ask people, tell a funny story. And suddenly, suddenly you are blank, blank because, because you have no training. training. And, and uh, actually, actually uh, it's a good it's thing in wherever you meet that, that somebody, somebody has, has a story, story to tell uh, because it uh, helps, helps everyone, everyone to, to join in and, and listen. And uh, uh, nobody, nobody has, has to be on the outside because everybody are, are on the inside, inside in the story, in the, story, in the mental in the story. story. Mm. I think it's a good thing. Everyone is a storyteller, even though we are we have different experience on 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 sharing stories. I mean, we do that socially, you know, like in social media now. I mean, they're very very short, but we are storytellers. And, and but then again, we we they are little tools that you can can help mm. us remember and and also to retell maybe to make create new stories, which is more in line with the society in which we live or would like rather to live in the future. Uh, and, and, and to, to make that bond between cultures, religious, religions, space, wherever we, we live on earth, to realize that, that we, we, we're here together. 
with, with the one mission. And I think, how are we doing for time? Do we still have some more time? 31 minutes past one. So we're coming close maybe to start wrapping up today. But I'd like for all of those who are, who are out there and who will listen to this today or later, I really do encourage you uh, to become storytellers and healing storytellers in one way or another, joining the ship of the new story if you have any stories that you think uh, would be apt in this context, any links to other networks or people involved, please put that in the chat or send a message there on, on YouTube. Uh, and we gladly try to collect them as we go along in the future. And we will follow on. There will be another session on this theme tomorrow. As many of the other programs uh, that Chip of a New Story do, you can find them at the uh, info at Almedal and play uh, but also uh, House of Story will continue this is like the first uh, sendings we do now but we are looking forward to share many more stories with you in the future are you going to do uh, arrange any courses in uh, healing storytellers absolutely that's within the plan uh, we also have something which called we call tell us theater Tell us or tell us theatre, mm -hmm. which has the uh, uh, the focus of, of sharing stories, teaching stories, the art of in whatever form that may be, the oral storyteller using moving image, using arts, uh, etc. In only one, I really do invite you back if you're around here uh, at four o'clock today. We will do another piece where we're going to invite a friend of mine, a great great artist. Today she's going to work with Ebro painting, Turkish old tradition of painting upon water, talking water, uh, and we share some stories with that and looking at as, as that is a format for sharing stories. All right. That sounds exciting. Hope uh, you all get back at four o'clock. Uh, any other announcements on the, the two days we are sending? Is it any more? Well, we have a full day today. Uh, uh, we run till five o'clock today, but also tomorrow we have a full program. But other than will be centered around uh, play, creativity, arts, storytelling for a better world as part of the new story uh, and as part of House of Story, where we are broadcasting from. All right. That, that wraps, wraps it, up. it up. Yeah, yeah I, think. I think. Thank you Thank for you joining us today. today. So, so we say, we say ship. ship. Ahoy! Ahoy.